Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. Happy Cyber Rodeo Day. If you're out there experiencing FOMO because you're not attending, just know it's going to be okay, life will go on. And remember, you saved a bunch of money not traveling and you can enjoy it from the comfort of your own home as there will be a live stream set up for tonight and plenty of stuff on Twitter and I'm sure YouTube as well. And great news for anybody that went out there without a ticket, as Elon confirmed today, the door won't be super strict. And that live stream is set to begin at 9 p.m. Central Time, so it'll be a late night for you East Coasters if you're not a night owl. The doors open at 4, festivities will begin at 8, and Elon is set to talk around 9 o'clock, so probably 9.30 or 10. And I know not everybody is super happy about this, but Greg Abbott and Ted Cruz are both also expected to talk tonight at the event. Today, CNBC was talking about Hummer production, but they also mentioned Q1 EV market share data, and have a look at this. Tesla's lead is seemingly growing. And they believe that they are just at the beginning of the Hummer, in their words, doing well, being a game changer, and they need a game changer. Look at the U.S. EV market share. This is from Motor Intelligence for the first quarter. You know what name you don't see there? General Motors. They only delivered a little over 400 EVs. Now, remember, they had suspended bolt production. They started that back up this week. In fact, yesterday they said they expect record deliveries uh, for the Chevy Bolt and the Bolt EUV. And yes, the Hummer is part of what they expect to be a move to eventually surpass Ford and Volkswagen and Hyundai here in the U.S., but that's not going to be happening anytime soon. Yesterday, the White House met with many people across the auto industry to talk about the future of EVs and EV charging, and surprise, surprise, Tesla was actually involved. So Reuters is reporting this guest list. Elon Musk, Mary Barra, Jim Farley, Carlos Tavares, Peter Rawlinson, and then we have execs from Nissan, Hyundai, Subaru, Mazda, Toyota, Mercedes, and Kia. Sadly, very little info was given on the meeting other than they spoke about creating a national network of 500,000 chargers. And to bring everybody up to speed, Congress approved that $7.5 billion for EV charging and $5 billion of that is set to go to states to create a network of EV charging stations. States must submit their request to the Joint Office of Energy and Transportation by August 1st, and the Federal Highway Administration will approve eligible plans by September 30th, with $615 million being made available in fiscal year 2022. And a second grant program designed to further increase EV charging access in rural and underserved communities is set to be announced later this year. Currently, there's around 41,000 public charging stations with more than 100,000 outlets, but we all know not all of those work and others work, but they don't work well. The current state of public charging is indeed very fragmented. The good news is this infrastructure law does allow for funding to go to new DC fast charging stations, but level two chargers are much cheaper to build and install, meaning the administration can actually get more of them for less money. For some context, level two chargers can be installed for a few thousand dollars, whereas DC fast chargers can be 50 to 100 times more expensive. So it's great that Elon was finally given a seat at the table. I'm sure he had some great insight. I personally just wish we had a lot more transparency into these meetings. Let us know what you guys are talking about. I mean, it is a lot of our money that's actually funding these operations. So just clue us in a little bit is all that I would ask. Next up, I wanna talk about Tesla's NPS or its net promoter score, which is one of the main metrics companies use to measure their customer experience. These scores are driven by one simple question. On a scale of zero to 10, how likely is it that you would recommend your company product or service to a friend or colleague? Detractors slot in zero to six, passives are seven to eight, and promoters are nine to 10. Those results are then translated into a score out of 100, and according to most recent estimates, Tesla has a net promoter score of 97. That means the overwhelming majority of Tesla's customers are promoters, while less than 2% are passives and detractors. I'll give you more context in a second, but according to a Bloomberg study, 99% of Tesla customers would recommend the Model 3 to friends or family. Tesla has the highest owner satisfaction of all car brands, according to Consumer Reports. And a recent study from Experian found that Tesla is the number one car brand for brand loyalty. And for some context, this 97 may be one of the best NPS scores of any major brand in the world. Bain & Company, the organization that invented the NPS score, says anything above 50 
is great and anything above 80 is incredible. This means that Tesla's NPS score of 97 is basically untouchable. And according to NPS benchmarks, the automotive industry average NPS is 58. Honda's 82, Toyota 43, Hyundai 69, Harley 52, and Rolls Royce 47. And it shouldn't come as a surprise because this is exactly how Tesla is growing so quickly without spending money on traditional advertising. Today, we got some new comments from Ron Barron on Tesla stock, so have a listen. So we made about $6 billion. Uh, so far, we sold about a billion dollars worth of stock. Just because you didn't want it to be an even bigger position in the portfolio? Uh, yes, well, what it was is that I was getting widely criticized for having such a large percentage of my assets in two of our mutual funds, Barron Partners Fund and Barron Focus Growth Fund, in one stock. And people said, how can you be so crazy? And so I wanted them to think I wasn't crazy. I know I'm crazy. <laughs> but, but they didn't want, uh, you know, and you know, I want to be responsible to people, and I didn't want people to say, you know, he's lost his mind. And even though I think for Tesla, this is the very beginning of what they're doing. I mean, they just reported numbers a couple of days ago, and they said that they did 310,000 uh, cars in a quarter, you know, in the three-month period of time, 310,000. General Motors did 24. <laughs> Not 24,000, 24. And, uh, and I, I, I'm a huge fan of Mary Barra, and I think she will be successful. And they have this cruise inside of it that I think is going to be a very cool business. And we're an investor in cruise uh, through her private company. You uh, think this is just the beginning for Tesla, for Tesla. meaning what? Yeah, so they did 310,000 cars in the quarter. And people said, well, they should have done 317,000 cars in the quarter. And uh, but at one pl uh, the plant in China was closed for about four or five days. and. Um, there's supply chain problems in this period of time. And so everyone's focused on what this quarter for 310,000 cars. In four years, three years, they're going to be doing a million dollars a quarter, not 310,000. A million share, a million cars a quarter. And if you go 10 years, they're going to be doing something like 5 million cars a quarter. So here you are doing 310,000 cars and people saying a few thousand more, a few thousand less. I'm thinking about in eight or 10 years, this is 20 million car uh, company. You you expect to still be an investor in eight to 10 years? Yes. yes. Are you selling any more shares? Um, periodically, if, uh, if, if people say, you know, if it gets crazy big relative to the size of the, of the fund right now, then I would. Now, I own a million quarter shares uh, for our firm in the company. I have not sold a single share of that, and I don't expect to. Okay. In what my lifetime. In your lifetime, you don't expect. In my lifetime. Okay. And the same thing with SpaceX. So I think we're going to make three or four or five times our money in the next ten years in in, uh, in Tesla. And I think it's again good. from on top from of the here. money that you've made. So never selling and a three to five x for Tesla stock from today's levels by 2030. Now, I do actually think it could happen sooner than that, especially if FSD or the bot hit on any sort of level. And we need to remind ourselves, Ron Barron isn't just some Tesla fanboy. Listen to what he said back in October of 2018 about Tesla. You did say at one point that you thought this would be a trillion dollar company by 2030. Yes. That, that would be much more than doubling. Yes, um, 20 times, 30 that, times. How does that happen in your scenario? Boy, it's really hard. And it's hard. It's really hard. And there could be, so, but he has all kinds of products. Uh, he, I think it could be a $500 billion battery business, $500 billion car business. I think that I give that better than 50-50 chance. I give the fact that it could be a $60 billion company in three years, I give that maybe 80% chance. So I think that in three years we can triple our money and I think in, uh, if, if you take my scenario and, and I'm right and I think there's better than 50-50 chance in, in uh, 12 years, that he's going to get to a trillion dollars of revenues of revenues. That means he's going to be making $150 billion a year. $150 billion a year, the company's selling for $50 billion right now. You want to give it a 10 multiple? You want to give it a, a 5 multiple? You want to give it a 15 multiple? So basically, that's a big number compared to where it is right now. It could be 30 times. Right. But it, it's, it's, you know, there's a lot of things. You can't just go out there. There's not like just advertising, getting people to buy your service. You've got it's a lot of building. things that have to break your way. Yes. And virtually every other car company in the, in the business has to either go out of business. Or... So, no. I mean, I'm talking about selling 10 million cars. There's 90 million cars a year that are sold in 17 million United States. I'm talking, I think this is going to be the biggest car company. I think they have 10, 10 million cars, 15 million cars a year. And I think the battery business, where there's all this technology in the batteries, I think the battery business is going to be as big as the car business. I mean, here we sit in 2022, and this box has already 
already been checked. So once again, this could happen much sooner than 2030 and it wouldn't be anything totally out of the ordinary. Most investors are expecting linear progression. However, as we've talked about many times, Tesla is in the midst of an S curve ramp and that's when things get really exciting. Next up, we get this very interesting post on Reddit, CCS1 adapter in the Midwest USA, much easier than the Chatamo, it just works. But what's interesting here is the original poster said a contact at Tesla reporting back its general compatibility with charging networks. Just FYI, some people in the States are getting this adapter from eBay. I can't confirm if it's legit, but there are options out there. And on your Tesla touchscreen, you can tap the car icon at the bottom left, then software, then tap additional vehicle information. That way you can find out if your car is CCS adapter capable. And currently the CCS1 is rated for 150 kilowatts. So far, no official US pricing available, but this original poster said CCS1 so far has been 100% reliable. So if this user is legit, then Tesla is basically making sure that the CCS1 adapter is going to work well for the Tesla experience. So this is currently being done via internal testing only. And in case you're not familiar, this would be the CCS1 adapter to use at places like Electrify America, EVgo, and other DC fast chargers in the States. And as we talked about earlier, much of the federal EV charging infrastructure bill will be for CCS1. Tesla has raised the price just of the Model 3 long range and performance. Long range has increased $1,500 and performance has increased $1,000. Elon shared two memes today that were just too good not to pass along to you guys. Here's number one and here was number two. In case you see news out there about Elon already selling some of his Twitter shares, he said no sale took place. The initial share number filed was incorrect. And we have to talk briefly about the Hummer. Out of spec just uploaded a review and he actually really enjoyed it. He even said he kind of hated how much he liked the vehicle and there's some new data coming out about the vehicle. First up, GM has said the whole goal of this vehicle was to get people excited and thinking about EVs that wouldn't necessarily be excited and thinking about EVs. GM has also released a WTF or a Watts to Freedom mode that launches the vehicle zero to 60 in around three seconds. This is part of the move by GM with this vehicle to get people excited and it did have to go through a long approval process and a battle with GM's lawyers. Company said, quote, we don't want you to continue to have this belief that we're this old stuffy legacy company. The Hummer is such an engaging experience and we want to break the norms. GM also deploying some Easter eggs here as as you can see on the screen, they have a Hummer EV running over a Tesla Cybertruck. There's also a prominently placed button on the center knob that right now does nothing. When you press it, it says your mode, your mission. Basically, GM is looking for owners to submit their own ideas for a feature for the button that will then be added via OTA updates. So I actually really like this idea. I think soliciting the early adopters feedback is an excellent way to build this new brand and this new image for GM. So now the main question becomes, how fast can GM fulfill the order backlog that sits around 60,000? And GM has reiterated this is a very profitable vehicle for them. So whether you love it or you hate it, this could be a good start for GM into the EV industry. There's a chance the first users take delivery of Model Ys from Gig Austin tonight. There were some tweets floating around saying they got confirmation. However, they have since been deleted, so we'll have to wait and see. Tesla's latest software update is set to have additional bottom bar customization, which many people have been asking for. No other details given, but this is a good sign. And I'll send you guys off with some sights and sounds so far from the Cyber Rodeo event. Hope you guys enjoy the event later tonight. Please like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.